What's up guys, welcome to Care Coach Lead. This is Andrew Frezza with Melissa Dixon and today we're gonna to be talking about how to coach the dead bug and specifically two variations that you may wanna think about programming and how to delineate between the two variations and make sure that it's not just all being mumbled together when we're describing it to a class or to a client or we're not saying that this is 100% the way you have to always do it and then we're contradicting someone else on our staff that is coaching it a different way and making sure that we're all on the same page as a staff when we're delivering these and using it for the right applications. So what we're gonna show you guys is two versions. One is basically what we're gonna refer to as a gymnastics dead bug. And then the second version is gonna be more of a weightlifting dead bug, okay? And the biggest differences between the two is that when we're teaching a gymnastics dead bug, we're gonna teach a more rounded back position intentionally because we're working towards shapes of hollow and tuck positions that we see in gymnastics. And when we're talking about the weightlifting version of the dead bug, we're gonna have a neutral spine because when we're lifting external objects, we're squatting, we're deadlifting, we're pressing, we are looking to maintain and reinforce a neutral spine when we're doing those movements. So when you guys are doing these in warmups or as skill progressions, on a gymnastics focused day, you can use a gymnastic version. On the weightlifting day, you can use the more lifting version. So let's talk about this first gymnastics version and what it might look like. So with this, we're gonna get the knees directly above the hips, okay? That's actually gonna be in both versions. And then we're gonna allow the shoulders and the head to come off the floor. So we're doing that tuck position, that crunch, bringing the rib cage down to the waist to create that stability in the core. And when we do this, that should press the low back to the floor, we should feel pretty much from the tailbone to her uh, thoracic spine area, all painted to the floor. That's what we're looking for there in that gymnastics dead bug. So that's our home position. And then obviously with the dead bug, she might move around a little bit. So once she's there, I ensure her low back is pressing the floor. She can do that opposite arm and opposite leg moving away from itself, okay? So you can go ahead and relax. And within that, we might have versions where she's holding a dumbbell over the, her body and she's not moving the arms, she's just moving the legs. We might have her hold on to a band in that position to feel that lat tension and that band's pulling from the opposite direction there. We might put two and a half pound plates in her hand to get that a weighted flexion on the shoulder to get ready for some kind of kipping toes to bar or kipping uh, muscle ups or pull ups, things like that. So we can then create variations off of this gymnastics version. Yeah, what I, what I really like about both of the variations, but using two different styles of dead bug, like you said before, having it be focused towards the day, the movement of the day, is we're always thinking about the nervous system and how it needs to feel these positions before we're under load or before we're under stress or intensity. So in this version, you know, having a pointed toe, mimicking pointing your toe when you're hanging on the rig, you know, getting those patterns warmed up neurologically is super important to do from the ground before you're on the rig or before you're, you know, in a, in a high stress workout. Okay, so now let's show the neutral spine dead bug. And this could be done with knees bent, but typically when we coach it, we coach it with straight legs. Let's start with knees bent because we were just in that position. So in this case, she's still gonna have the arms up to the sky, but now what she's doing is she's creating that same 360 degrees of tension. She's gonna get a big breath in, lock that in, and that should help her paint that low back to the floor without needing to lift her head and her shoulders off the floor. Now, like I said, we like to do this as a straight leg version, and we'll, go, we'll do a whole video on this version of the dead bug, but with this, we want her to, her to have her legs as high as they can be where she can keep a locked out leg. So for some athletes that may not be as flexible, that might be here, but we want them ideally to be stacked and then the toes are also gonna be dorsiflex towards her body there, okay? And then she'll do the same dead bug from that position, maintaining that neutral spine as she goes through it, okay? And there's little nuances that we can take into that movement. So go ahead and relax. So let's talk about just general purpose of the dead bug as a whole, regardless of which version is, is what we're teaching the body to do is how do we create neutral or the uh, consistent spinal position while the rest of our body, our extremities are doing other stuff. If you think about running, you want everything else, your legs and your arms to be moving, 
but you don't want to be doing a bunch of crazy stuff through your core. You want to stay neutral through that core. And anytime we're doing lifting of any kind, that's essentially what we're doing. Most of the time in lifts, we are trying to keep a neutral, consistent spine each time. I've seen people or heard people in our membership when we started introducing the straight leg, you know, struggle to keep their head down, thinking they were going to not have such a tight crunch. But realistically, the difference of having that neutral spine and having everything aligned, mimicking a barbell pattern, mimicking having a barbell on your back or, you know, a front squat, what kind of load you're under in a front squat and trying to keep that totally straight. I've found that that straight leg version is so much harder to, to maintain when you're sending that leverage out further with that straight leg. Um, I've seen a lot of people actually struggle with it where they thought it would be the easier variation once they find you know, how to relax your head down, but still maintain that tension through the core. And then you realize that unless they are in this tight crunched position, they don't really feel how to engage their core with a neutral spine. So it's really a, a teachable moment for athletes to become in tune with how to brace, how to create that canister and how to keep a, a really tight core where they have been so relaxed when their spine is neutral. Yeah, so I want, I'm gonna circle back to that point, but let's talk about application. So again, the gymnastics version, you wanna save that for days where you're doing gymnastics movements. Hollow, hollow holds, tuck holds, kipping movements, strict movements on the bar. Anytime you're hanging from a rig, you wanna do more of that gymnastics dead bug. If the focus of the day is more on a big lift, a deadlift, a back squat, I would encourage you to focus on more of that neutral spine dead bug. Now, the one little nuance that we'll talk about, which Mel started to talk about, so if you go back to a, what should be a neutral spine but bent knee, so keep your shoulders and, and head relaxed. Let's say we have a client who's trying to do a neutral spine dead bug here, but when I slide my hand under, there's space under there. They're not able to get that pressure into the floor. They're not able to feel that core stability that we want them to create. So we will kind of cheat the dead bug by allowing this person to tuck up to be able to create some of that core tension we need. And that can be kind of a progression to get them to feel it. Another movement that's awesome for that is the curl up. So in the curl up, she'll have her feet flat. She'll crunch up. She'll really feel her low back into the ground. And then her goal is she's gonna relax her shoulders and head back. She's not gonna lose this. She's gonna keep her low back painted into the ground. So this is another great drill or intermediary substitute that you can use for someone who you want to do a neutral spine dead uh, lift with or a dead bug with, yet you can't get them to feel it. These are great tools that you can have in your toolbox, substitutions you can make or progressions you can use in a one-on-one -on -one setting to get them to feel what they need to feel. I really like that curl up. That curl up gives me everything, <laughs> everything I need. Seven minute abs, just do curl up straight for seven minutes. I hope you guys found this helpful. We'll go into the nitty gritty of straight leg dead bugs in a different video because that is really more, there's more to that movement than you guys think, but hopefully this was valuable for you. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll see you in the next video.